define hero h e r o hero an ordinary person admired for their courage extraordinary beliefs and relentless action a 16 year old swedish girl who has missed school to sit outside the parliament every friday since last august protesting against climate change she beat the odds she moved the gods she won applause we at nafta society delhi strive to make people realize their true potential and create heroes out of all stakeholders from creators to consumers by defining skills and redefining practices through solutions that empower our users to become worthy contributors presenting to you our first project today indian cities boast of unparalleled economic growth and increasing consumerism craving for the best facilities we show our insanity by being ignorant of the environment we live in and in cities like delhi waste management through landfilling contributes to 25% of the total air pollution in the city the huge landfills in okla gazipur and bhalswa force the neighboring residents to live in its stench and inhale the smoke emanating due to the landfill fires people try to disguise them under the garb of greenery but we did not forget that countless children are born disabled near landfills 15 people die of cancer each year due to pollution from bhandwari landfill and two people died due to a landfill collapse in gazipur with a vision to save india from the perils of unmanaged waste we started nirmalaya organic waste is the major constituent of landfills which are already exceeding their capacities reports suggest that centralized waste management models have been unable to cope with the rapidly growing population and increasing volume of per capita waste generation demanding that organic waste be managed at the source itself composting is a well known and easy to implement method to convert organic waste into a valuable resource to understand why composting is still not widely implemented we conducted a survey to conclude that existing composting solutions are expensive tedious to use prone to foul odor and lack speed as well as aesthetic appeal after months of product development we came up with user friendly solutions to manage two types of organic waste horticulture and kitchen waste our first vertical deals with kitchen waste at household level through sugriha a range of beautiful terracotta home composters designed to convert your kitchen waste into compost in just 40 days it's affordable user friendly and odorless features fit perfectly into every household these are fabricated by mohar and ankit bhaiya two potters in kumar gram their community has a legacy of stellar craftsmanship recognized nationally however declining value of traditional clay pots and competition from plastic substitutes resulted in dwindling incomes thereby making life miserable so griha gave them an opportunity to create a unique value out of their skills once manufactured the sugriha units are stored in a nearby go down as inventory sales occur via two channels online and offline online sales occur through the nirmalaya website e-commerce platforms like amazon and pepperfry social media advertisements and digital workshops via whatsapp offline sales occurs through free workshops in societies partner retail stores dealers and through referrals from our existing customers upon receiving the orders Deepak our operations head delivers sugrihas to respective households and trains the users accordingly within the last year we sold 470 sugrihas across ncr generating a revenue of 15 lakh rupees nurturing green a gardening and gifting company with more than 30 retail stores across india has become our official retail partner garg agency in south delhi saksham foundation in ghaziabad and eco santulan in gurugram taken up the dealership of sugriha generating sustainability and scalability in sales recently we launched sugriha stars our affiliate marketing program which invites homemakers to spread the movement in the networks further empowering others mohar bhaiya now earns an additional income of 30000 rupees per month and his work is attracting people across india to deal with the horticulture waste at community level we devised ruchitra an easy to use aerobic mesh composting unit that employs layer by layer process and microbial additives to reduce composting time from 5 to just 2 and a half months we identified schools societies and colleges as the initial adopters of ruchitra we transferred our skills gained after months of experience to our entrepreneurs to make operations sustainable mr pradeep an unemployed young man skilled in salesmanship handles the marketing of ruchitra This involves generating leads in the market segment, holding meetings, and finally receiving the orders. On receiving an order, Mr. Raj manufactures the mesh and gets it transported to the site. There, Deepak Bhaiya installs Ruchitra, trains the gardeners, and provides monitoring visits till the first harvest. Ruchitra allows customers to save expense on buying manure and provides additional income opportunities to gardeners via sale of surplus compost. In this way. 
We installed 88 Ruchitras in 27 schools and 35 societies. Spanning 8 cities and 4 states. Generating a revenue of 16 lakh rupees. And creating awareness among 10,000 residents and 5,000 students. Seeing the success of our model, NDMC approached us to scale it in the 100 parks of Rajendranagar Ward in collaboration with Urja. Through MP LAT funds worth 25 lakh rupees. Sanctioned by Ms. Binakshi Lekhi, Member of Parliament from New Delhi constituency. Under the branding with the cause model, medium scale companies have come forward to sponsor our meshes and in return, use the available space on Ruchitra for branding in public places. Deepak now earns 8,000 rupees per month. And Mr. Pradeep carries out marketing on full pace, earning 18,000 rupees per month through profits from Ruchitra sales. Mr. Raj, our mesh manufacturer, additionally earns 25,000 rupees per month, a 100% rise in his income. Besides economic empowerment, Ruchitra has enabled the social recognition of over a hundred gardeners for their noble efforts. In total, Nirmalya generated a revenue of 66 lakh rupees to its two verticals. Created 10 entrepreneurs. And generated additional income opportunities for more than 45 people. 526 tons of waste was prevented from reaching landfills, avoiding 920 tons of greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. Our products have helped our customers realize compost savings worth 10 lakh rupees. Despite steady growth rates and fantastic market response. We had one fear. How do we ensure that this impact lasts even when we don't? We needed someone who would passionately work by our side and take Nirmalya to great heights. We entered into a joint venture with Batama Solutions, a small waste management consulting firm led by Mrs. Jyoti Aroda. An exemplar woman, helping people make greener choices for the last 10 years. With the combined efforts of her team and our entrepreneurs, we have received orders from the municipal corporations of Panchkula and Chandigarh. And through this collaboration, in the next one year, we will have a 30% increase in our monthly revenues. Scaling across 12 states in India. Creating 20 entrepreneurs. And launching two more products. Our next project urges you to introspect. Do you think it is fine to accompany death with the killing of another life? Is a funeral really pure when accompanied by impurity disappearing into the grey skies? While we pray for peace of departed souls, do we realize that we leave our earth in unrest by cutting down lakhs of fully grown trees? This is the scenario of Indian cremations that burn 400 kilograms of wood for each pyre, accounting for the deforestation of 50 million trees per year in India. Seeing this impending crisis, we felt an urgent need to redefine this ritual and started Project Earth. We started our journey to find the right substitute for wood-based cremations and realized that alternatives like CNG or electric cremations exist in some areas, but they are barely accepted due to religious skepticism. The perfect alternative had to be such that it aligns with the rituals. To understand cremations, we interacted with crematorium workers and pundits. And found that most of the crematoriums in Delhi include a portion of cow dung cakes with wood logs, as it is considered pious in Hindu scriptures. Realizing that cow dung is easily acceptable as a cremation fuel, we explored its sources like goshalas and dairies in Delhi. Discovering that daily over 1 lakh kg of cow dung is either disposed of unhygienically, clogging drains or dumped into heaps, decomposing anaerobically and emitting greenhouse gases. Here, we saw an opportunity to convert an entirely wasted resource into a commodity of immense value. Our team conducted extensive research to derive a fuel out of cow dung, with combustion properties superior to the conventional dung cakes. Wood shavings and waste bagasse are added to the cow dung in a definite ratio to improve flammability and reduce emissions. The mixture is then extruded with the machine to give it a shape resembling wood logs. Since goshalas are the biggest source of cow dung, we selected them as the ideal location to manufacture the logs. Shri Krishna Gaushala, the biggest in NCR, came forward to be our first manufacturing hub. Through crowdfunding and grants from MHRD, we gathered the necessary funds to set up the log making machine, an insulated room with heaters for drying and racks for storage. We identified Durgesh and Shubham Bhaiya, two informal workers in Gaushala, to be the managers of our hub. They had been doing small jobs on a temporary basis, earning a meager income. We trained them to manufacture logs and maintain necessary records and finances. Our entrepreneurs are confidently running the manufacturing operations and maintaining regular supply of dried logs to Nigam Bodh Ghat, the largest and busiest in Delhi. At the Ghat, logs are sold at 5.5 rupees per kilogram. For each log sold, 20% goes to the Goshala, 50% to our entrepreneurs and rest goes to us for sustaining operations and further expansion. Currently, they are used along with the wood logs in a 40% ratio. Within the last three months, 
our production capacity of 800 logs per day has generated a monthly income of 15,000 rupees for our entrepreneurs. Preventing 120 trees from being cut down, allowing them to absorb 2.5 tons of CO2 from the atmosphere each month. Our sustainable business model has been replicated in four more Gaushalas, creating seven entrepreneurs. And attracted ten more Gaushalas across India and Nepal. We are on their way to implement our model and create 18 more entrepreneurs in coming months. They will bear the initial cost of outlay which will completely break even in three months. Our work has been covered by the leading newspapers and mentioned by the Honourable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi. We launched the last Right Done Right campaign to spread our message among the masses. Appreciated by the Minister of Environment, Mr. Prakash Javadekar. Our campaign was joined by the Honourable MP of Ladakh. And thousands of others who have come forward to pledge for cleaner air and brighter future. This year, our team of 46 active members has dedicated over 61,000 working hours for implementing our three projects. With the support network of 12 organizations. Generated a revenue of 66 lakh rupees. And received grants worth 8 lakhs. Created 28 entrepreneurs. Transfer transferred skills to over 4,000 people. And impacted over 47,000 lives. Through reliable technologies and sustainable business models, we tackled eight sustainable development goals, including climate action. In Access IIT Delhi salutes Greta Thunberg, the 16 year old Swedish girl who inspires me, you, and the heroes we create Miss Jyoti, Mohan, Durgesh, Pradeep, with several others, combating climate change in their own capacities. Because someone has to. We aspire. We believe. We achieve. We, we are In Actus IIT Delhi. Delhi. Thank you so much yeah. team. We will now begin with the question and answer session and yeah. only judges may ask the questions. Hi. Hello. Hi. So cow dung when uh, burnt it uh, gives away ethanol. Can you explain a little bit more about the process of the additives you add to the cow dung so that the fumes and the contamination is reduced? Thank you for your question sir. We are current, uh, we have researched and developed the fuel under the guidance of Professor Anjan Ray from Mechanical Engineering Department here. Uh, hello. Uh, we have developed the fuel under the guidance of Professor Anjan Ray here in IIT Delhi. As of now, we haven't published the research and since it is a joint collaboration between us and the professor, so we cannot receive, uh, detail the exact specifics of how the process is conducted. But we use a specific proportion of bagas and wood shavings and uh, in a proper size and mix them in a proper way and apart from it our research is not completed yet as of yet it is the first working prototype and we plan to uh, improve it o further over the next one or two years thank you how do you how do you plan to you know, address the religious sentiments of hindus i mean you have tried something but it will require much more effort for acceptability is there any plan like that so, so I, would sir, like to, I would like to answer this question. So as per our surveys uh, with the crematorium workers and pundits in India, it is being revealed that uh, using cow dung in cremations is actually considered pious in our Hindu scriptures. And we have actually uh, like talked to various people from various castes and it is being revealed that some castes actually burn whole of their bodies using cow dung itself. Because according to our scriptures, it is actually pure to use this along with wood logs. So, this is not a religious issue for most of the Hindus currently. And we had, uh, when we conducted survey across various crematoriums, we talked to various pundits and other religious leaders and most of them agree, agreed to the idea of using cow dung because in general, before every, in every cremation, uh, first a layer of cow dung is added and then wood is kept. So what we have done is we have increased the layer, size of layer of cow dung, thereby saving trees and reducing the amount of wood. And I would uh, like to add that in Nigambodh Ghat, currently daily 10 kg of cow dung is actually used with each of the cremation because of its religious alignment. So actually it's, it's like, widely accepted by Hindus currently. Excuse me, I have a question here. Yeah. Uh, have you considered the use of uh, converting the organic into gas and then energy rather than actually burning it directly and generating smoke? Thank you for your question, sir. As of now, uh, there, as we said in the presentation too, Alternatives like CNG and electric based cremations exist, but even in big cities like Delhi, the, uh, their penetration is less than 3% because various uh, religious ceremonies like Kripal Kriya cannot be conducted. Hence, using gas will is, was not a solution which was widely accepted and hence we 
tried to fill the gap with using cow dung logs itself and thereby saving two trees and preventing wastes of cow dung. And I would like to add that in Nigambodh Ghat, if 50 cremations are conducted daily, only four or five cremations are conducted through CNG or electric based cremation. Although the cost for these cremations is lesser than those conventional wood cremations. So it's all because of the religious alignments that these solutions are not currently viable for Hindus. But have you considered uh, using social action to increase awareness not of the use of cow dung logs but of use of gas or uh, uh, other forms of energy? Sir, as of now, uh, truly speaking, we haven't worked much into the direction of spreading awareness for electric and CNG based cremation. But we do have a policy that all the cremations we target are wood based cremations. All the people who currently use electric and CNG based cre uh, cremations, we never target that section of the society. And I believe that uh, the actual innovation in Project Earth is you know taking religious beliefs uh, or religious you know existing rituals and giving them a slight twist in a way that uh, your religious sentiments are not hurt and at the same time you are not creating too much harm to the environment so the idea here uh, is you know initiating behavioral change over a longer duration of time uh, i have a very small and a very basic yes. question you spoke about 30% in project earth being retained by the team uh, just want to understand, is it for reinvestment? What is it used for? I'm just trying to see a very it is distribution of... Uh, thank you for the question, ma'am. It is majorly used for currently since, uh, as you saw, we are trying to expand in various cities around the country. So the travelling cost, additionally, since we are conducting the research and development and improving our drying systems con continuously, so we also require funds for that. So it is majorly used for reinvestment. Do you consider into the that to be a fair retention? Hello. Yes. Hey. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, the total composting potential in India uh, is about uh, 50 lakh metric tons, right? Uh, you have done about 470 tons so far. Uh, Technologies such as these, you know, to create the compost uh, and the for using as manure has been there, uh, but the adoption, uh, at least at the household levels, has has not found its way. So. If you talk about your growth and the larger potential that exists and the barriers, uh, what do you think your your own uh, reasons for success is? Is it the technology, the solution, or the approach, your business model? And then, what would you recommend to the larger, you know, uh, households or so uh, to ensure that this picks up uh, sooner than later? I'm really sorry, but the time has now expired. Judges, please join me in thanking IIT Delhi for their presentation and hard work. This is an announcement for the audience. We will now have a 10 minute short break. By my clock, it's 4.35, so I request each and every one of you to be here by 4.45 sharp. <laughs>